Hello, welcome to this session. My name is Amir, I'm manager of the solution architecture, and we're going to be speaking about uh, adaptive analytics. So before giving you the demo, because this is what this session is about, we are going to be talking a little bit about the problem. So analytics can be a hard problem. Imagine you have a transactional system and it's been working for years and it's running on iris and you need now to do some analytics. You need to do some reporting, you have to build a model for machine learning, you need to aggregate this data, uh, answer to some regulatory reporting initiative. Um, and that system is already well fine-tuned for that transactional workload. So whatever tool you pick, Tableau, Excel, uh, Power BI, you're doing some machine learning work, if you hit that system directly, it's going to hurt. That system is not made, is not built for that. So there is a chasm there. And there are many solutions for that. For instance, you could build a data warehouse. Then you can work with a data engineer and he will do a lot of ETL, extract, transform, load, to take that data out of that transactional system and leave it on another database, which is your uh, data warehouse. And then you can put, uh, point that preferred tool, tool of yours to that data warehouse and do your analytics. Or, but let's say you have more than one system, because sometimes to make meaningful analytics of a business, you need to collect data from more than one source. So that works, becomes a little bit more complex. And initiatives like a data lake uh, are normally the way to go, but they, when you start bringing all that data together, it's really hard to join them and to keep that up and running, and the volumes are difficult to manage, and it normally becomes a data swamp instead of a meaningful data lake. So is that a better way? So let's think about this problem. What if there is a better way? What if I don't have to build this data warehouse or build this data lake, do all these ETL by hand, keep them up to date with the changes I have on my transactional systems, and manage this, another, this third piece of software, which is the data lake or the data warehouse. So that's what, what uh, InterCitizen's Iris Adaptive Analytics comes to help. It is different in the way that you don't really need to build a data, a data warehouse or a data lake. You don't need to define physical cubes or data marts manually. You don't need to build ETLs, extract, transform, and load from those source systems to populate these cubes manually. At scale does that for you. So we have partners with At scale. We're going to talk about another session from Carmen that will explain all about that. This session is about the demo, so I'm not going into the details of our partnership and how they are taking advantage of a lot of our secret sauce in IDIS to get, to, to get a, a lot of uh, much better performance than they were getting before. So here we are talking about the solution to, to this problem. So the data stewards, they can now use this tool to look at the data that is in the transactional system and build a semantic layer. What is, this, what is a semantic layer? Sometimes the fields, they don't have the best names for business people. And sometimes you just really need to join things first and prepare a little bit the data, uh, the data model. So that's what the data steward can do. We don't really need a data engineer to do that. He will use this tool look at the data, join it, prepare it, give it little nice names, build some dimensions, some measures, and leave that ready for the business users to use. So no need for ETL, no need to pre-build cubes, physical cubes, and, 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 and load them with the data. No need to worry about performance, and we are going to explain why. So here are the business users. They can pick whatever tool they like. Uh, this, uh, this platform allows them to use SQL or MDX, so multidimensional expressions, 
all of that gets translated to the source systems. So how does that work? When we get a query from, let's say, a Tableau, we will break that query into queries that go to the source systems. And they bring the data in. And for the first time, that's all there is to it. But as we get queries from the business users, we get smarter. We allow you, uh, we cache this data inside Iris. We create aggregations with answers to frequently asked questions, and we store that in, into Iris as well. And we use machine learning to decide which aggregations are the best. So there is a lot going on here. And with time, we stop going into those transactional systems. We just go there for new data. So it really is super fast. And it can really allow you to uh, query billions of records in milliseconds. So what if my transactional application is not running on IRIS? So there is a solution for that. You can use IRIS interoperability and pick, and pick an adapter. Maybe you have to get your data out of there using SQL, uh, maybe Kafka, maybe you're talking to a mainframe application or getting messages out, out of a, a message queue. We store that data into IRIS and then it can be joined into uh, with other data sources in, in, with adaptive analytics. All right, so we have that system there, the, the, the known IDIS based system. We have the interoperability layer solving that problem for us. And we have other sources uh, that are based on IDIS. All of them are now looking like SQL and at scale can uh, join all this data together depending on what the data steward is, is defining. So depending on what the, the data steward is defining for the business users. So here you see that we would only need a data engineer to build integrations or some ETL in the case we are working with uh, a legacy system that's not running on IRIS. So now let's see a demo about this, about this UI. We're going to be showing you the UI of the data steward. You're going to see that it's a low code approach to look at the data and build a semantic model. And we are going also to see some queries using different tools like Tableau and Excel. So where is this demo running? Because we're talking about performance. So you have to have an idea of the hardware we are using. So Iris is running on a eight cores machine with 32 gigs of RAM and it has a billion rows loaded into it. And at scale is also running on a 32 gigs RAM of RAM machine with eight cores, so identical machines. And all of this is, uh, is happening inside these two machines. All right, so let's see the demo. So here in Iris, we can see a table with about a billion records and some other tables that we'll be using to join with. Now let's jump into at scale. Here in the right, you can see the tables that we were looking in Iris. And you can take a look at the data if you want. And if you want to start modeling, you just drag that table into uh, the diagram. The blue ones is my fact table. The green ones are the dimension tables. The gray ones are degenerate tables. So as an example, let's start building a measure it's a simple aggregation. Let's click here, add a measure, give it a name. We can keep a short name, but we have a description field that's going to be visible on the BI tool. I'm not typing anything here because we need to move fast. Let's pick the table now. And let's pick the column from the table. Now let's pick what is the aggregation type. We have a lot, <laughs> not only mean, max, average, sum, but also standard deviation. And we can pick a folder. These folders will also be visible on the BI tools like Tableau. So you can organize everything here for the users in the BI tools. Let's just pick one and save.
So this is a virtual cube. We are not bringing your data here. The data is still in iris. Now let's talk about consumption, right? This is Tableau and all the dimensions and measures we saw there in at scale, they are here. And we can start dragging some stuff into uh, a report. And you can see that the data is coming in very fast, all the aggregations that we are asking for. They are, it's, it's running on top of a billion records. If we go back to at scale, we can see the queries that Tableau was sending to at scale. This is the original query that is on top of the virtual cube. But down here, you can see also the queries that at scale was sending to Iris. So the original query sent by Tableau gets translated to this query you're looking at. And this query is joining the data and fetching the data from Iris. And as the users are using Tableau, Excel, whatever they want, at scale is learning from, from their queries, their queries patterns, and using machine learning to create aggregates. Uh, those are cache tables. So those are new tables created inside Iris that are, uh, are used by at scale to hold these computations. So queries will be uh, a lot faster with time. As at scale learns, uh, the queries will become faster and faster. So now let's jump to Excel. Let's pick some dimensions here. The folders, as we described in at scale, they appear here. Let's just try to create a similar query that we did with Tableau. There you go. We have generated a very similar dashboard. Now in Excel, you can click plus and drill down. Again, we acquired a billion rows. If we go back to at scale, we can find the query here. This time it's MDX. So at scale translates this MDX to SQL as well. But look, this time uh, the SQL is much simpler, They're, they are using a lot more aggregates this time. So as people are using and querying at scale, is learning and creating optimizations to make the queries run a lot faster. Let's go back to Iris and see those aggregates. Uh, this, there is a lot of work uh, that at scale is doing to integrate Iris uh, into at scale. So here are the aggregates. And as this work moves forward, they will be using special features of Iris, um, our special indexes, and um, even some backdoors uh, to make this run faster and faster, much faster than any other databases. They have already told us that they have never seen performance like this with other databases they support. Well, I hope you, will you enjoy the demo. So here are three takeaways for you. First of all, we don't need to build the physical cubes. We don't need to build ETLs. And better yet, we don't need to maintain them over time. So that's what we call data virtualization. Uh, the second takeaway is that you can have multiple sources. It's not only about having just one transactional system. You can actually get data from any iris-based system. And if you are talking to a legacy system that is not Iris, you can always have Iris interoperability to fetch that data for you. And the third is that it, this is for unprecedented skill. Unprecedented is a word that is being used too frequently today, but it, 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 it is true. Uh, when we were doing this partnership with AdSkill, they started using some of our secret sauce and uh, hidden features and we have a native integration with them, and they have never seen the performance uh, they have seen with us. So it, it is uh, really unbelievable. So please 
there is this other session from Carmen that explains all about that, our partnership with at scale and what is happening with intersystems iris uh, business intelligence uh, and a lot more uh, it's a very good session very informative please take a look at that and if you want to contact us here is my email just send me an email well thank you very much for your time